Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's webinar. We're really excited to be hosting this program this evening. Uh, we're here for three must-have meal upgrades for your anti-cancer pantry with the wonderful Rachel Beller, celebrity nutrition and breast cancer expert. I'm Jenna Fields. I am the California Regional Director of Sharsheret, and this program could not have happened this evening without our Sharsheret La Brea Committee. So thank you so much to our committee members for working together to plan this wonderful evening. And if you are ever interested in planning a program like this, please reach out to us. We've been doing these uh, virtually um, uh, since COVID started, and we would love to work with you to make it happen. I want to thank our sponsors and partners, AstraZeneca, Ateris Abigail, Beller Nutrition, the Baxter Center for BRCA, Cedar sinai Even LA, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Like I mentioned, we're doing these webinars um, all the time now to make sure that we're getting important critical information to our community. Um, next week, we're going to be offering a webinar on June 18th. We're partnering with Sephora uh, with their classes for confidence to bring skincare support and makeup tutorials for women in treatment and survivorship. So if this is something you're interested in, we will send out information after this program. I just want to touch on a few pieces of Zoom etiquette before we go further. Uh, this call has been muted. So everyone, please keep your button on mute for the remainder of the program. If you have questions, we're going to be utilizing that chat box. So please type in questions as you go. We'll get to some while Rachel is speaking. And we'll also have a QA and a uh, after Rachel's presentation where you can ask her more questions. If you would like to remain anonymous, there's still time. You can turn off your video in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, or you can call in. And my colleagues have provided that call-in number in the chat box for you. This program is going to be recorded and we will send it out with our uh, follow-up email either tomorrow or Friday. For many of you, Sharsheret might be a, a new organization. So I just wanna share a little bit about who we are, how we can support you and why we're doing this program tonight. Sharsheret provides services in two areas. One is one-on-one -on -one support for women and their family members who are going through treatment who are in survivorship and who may be at high risk for breast or ovarian cancer. Our services are completely free. They're offered by phone, email, and live chat, and they're offered in all 50 states. So if you or someone you know is going through uh, breast cancer or ovarian cancer right now or is high risk, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We know this is such a difficult time in so many ways and we are here for you to support you along your cancer journey. The other part of our work is educational. Uh, programs like tonight. Um, why is it important to educate the community about breast and ovarian cancer? It's because one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime, regardless of their family history, and one in 72 women will be diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Furthermore, as a Jewish organization, um, it's important to recognize the BRCA gene mutation. One in 40 Ashkenazi Jews is a carrier for the BRCA gene mutation, both men and women. And if you're a carrier for that mutation, your risk for breast cancer, ovarian cancer, prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer, melanoma, and male breast cancer all increase. And BRCA isn't the only gene mutation that increases your risk for some of those cancers. CHECK2, PALB2, and Lynch syndrome are just among the few. So if genetic testing is something you have ever thought about, or if you have a family history, please consider speaking with a genetic counselor. Uh, Sharshara actually has a genetic counselor on staff that offers free consultations. So we can send information out about that to all of you after the program. But there are things that we can all do regardless of family history. Um, we can speak to our doctor or genetic counselor if we have questions. Um, maybe we want to gather our family history for the first time even or talk with our family members about it. Um, don't ignore something if something doesn't feel right. Uh, I know that this is a difficult time to schedule doctor's appointments, 
um, but don't put off an appointment if you have any concerns. Um, and finally, there are small steps that we can all take to improve um, our health and wellness, like improving our diet. So that's why we're doing a program like this. So we can learn from experts like Rachel to help create a healthier lifestyle. Before Rachel shares her expertise, uh, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, one of the women in our Sharshare network who's going to share some of her experience firsthand. It's my pleasure to introduce Natalie Herschel. Hi, um, my journey began when I was tested for the BRCA2, uh, BRCA mutation through the BEFORE study. As I read about the initiative in AMI magazine that was taking place in New York, Philly, Boston, and LA. I work in market research and I know the importance of clinical trials. So I thought, why not help get them to their goal of a thousand people to be tested in LA? I never thought that I would get a positive BRCA2 diagnosis. No one in my family has or had breast cancer or any type of cancer. So this was a complete shock when I got the call with my test results. The first thing that I did was reach out to Char Sherritt. I spoke with one of their genetic counselors and then made an appointment to meet with one at Cedars. He gave me three options. One, do nothing. Two, preventative, sur preventative screening every six months. Or three, surgery. I knew that I did not want to go every six months for screening and decided to have preventative double mastectomy with immediate deep breast reconstruction. Deep inferior epigastic perforator flap which is advanced microsurgical technique that is used to rebuild the breast lost to mastectomy. The benefit of this type of reconstruction is you don't wake up flat and it's not implants. Basically, it's a one and done surgery. I found an amazing team at UCLA and was confident that my decision was the right one for my family and me. My surgery took place July 19th, 2019. It was a very long surgery, close to 12 hours and about a six week recovery. Thank God everything went well and I healed amazingly well. A few days after my surgery, my breast surgeon called to tell me that pathology found a two millimeter DCIS and she was shocked that it was even found. DCIS is when the cells of the milk ducts have become cancer, but they have not spread to the surrounding breast tissue. She said it was so small and not detected on any of the screenings I did prior to my surgery. She said there is no telling how long it would have taken to turn into something. I knew I made the right decision at the time, of, at the time and this reaffirmed it. I'm very fortunate to have been able to know my BRCA2 status. Both my parents were subsequently tested and my dad is the BRCA2 carrier. For many, it's surprising to learn that this could pass on through the dad's side of the family. I'm here to tell you that it's statistically just as likely. I'm not shy about telling friends and acquaintances about what I was doing and going through. I know of many who have tested because of me and I'm so proud of each and every one of them for taking charge of their health. My hope is that by sharing my story with all of you, it can take the fear out of the unknown and know you are not alone. I hope more people will be proactive and not scared about their health too. I'm honored to join the Peer and Buddy program at Sharsherit as I personally know how important it is to hear from someone who went through the process and can give their own personal story and perspective. Thank you. Thank you so much, Natalie, for sharing your story. We know it's not easy, especially with Zoom, but um, hearing what you went through and how you got through it is, is really important for all of us. So thank you. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce Rachel Beller. She's the CEO and founder of Beller Nutritional Institute and a registered dietitian nutritionist who specializes in weight management and breast cancer prevention. She is the newest member of Sharsherit's medical advisory board as of this week and we're very excited. Um, and she's a spokesperson for the American Cancer Society. She's a three-time best-selling author who frequently appears on television and print and online, including places like Good Morning America and CNN. Prior to founding Beller Nutritional Institute, she conducted research on the role of nutrition and breast cancer prevention at Cedar sinai and Providence St. John's for over a decade. At the Beller Nutritional Institute, she provides nutritional action plans for wellness and cancer prevention. Her third book, Power Spicing, is now available, along with the Rachel Beller Power Spicing product line of nutritional blends. And if you follow her on Instagram, uh, you get daily inspirations for how to use those power spicing. So I definitely recommend. Rachel offers both high-level concierge private nutrition counseling, as well as a unique 90-day online transformation masterclass. 
Now, before she begins, um, I want to remind each of you to keep your video on mute and to ask questions in the chat box we, as we go. Um, I am going to uh, jump in when Rachel's talking a little bit, um, but we're also going to have a Q&A at the end of the program. So without further ado, uh, Rachel, welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, it is your, it's your floor. There you go. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for that introduction. And uh, can you guys hear me okay? Okay. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much for that introduction. And uh, Charcheret has such a warm place in my heart. It has helped so many of my patients. And uh, it really is such an honor to, to join, um, to join Charcheret. And uh, I, I like to keep things pretty simple and practical. My goal for this evening is that you guys walk away with something that you could tell yourself, you know what, I'm actually gonna try this tomorrow. And that really, you know, nutrition is, there's so much to learn. I mean, it takes me months and months with a patient to really set up some long lasting solutions, um, whether it's during treatment or post treatment and, um, as, as was mentioned, there's, there's also an undeniable link between weight status and prevention, prevention of recurrence. So there are, there are a lot of different things. So um, it was really hard to figure out, you know, what to, what to um, sum it up into in something that could be meaningful with some takeaways for you guys. So I decided to focus on three principles and uh, that you can actually find in your pantry, something convenient and focusing on that one area that truly can make a difference for your life. So I'm gonna start with, um, I'm gonna talk about uh, fiber boosters, power spicing, and about plant-based proteins that are what I consider the fast food, uh, plant-based proteins that you can find in your pantry. So um, first I'm gonna start with fiber and fiber boosters, but one of the things that I want to mention is that fiber is one of the key cornerstones when it comes to breast health and our and weight management and a lot of uh, other areas which I'll talk about. So um, that's why I chose to talk about fiber boosters. But first, I want to talk to you about well, what what can fiber really do for you? You know, um, I'd say even five years ago, I would tell my patients what amount of fiber to get and that was important to get it and they would you know eat their vegetables and get a lot of fiber in the morning but boy things have really really changed and now we're looking at different kinds of fibers and it's, it's a whole new world and uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it but um, number one fiber can reduce estrogen levels it helps with hormonal balance and that's key it helps escort excess hormones like estrogen and cholesterol out of the body. So that's, that's one key important factor. Number two, it promotes gut health. And gut health is really becoming such an important um, aspect when it comes to breast health. Uh, interestingly, it's been found that a lot of women diagnosed with breast cancer have more, it's, it's a lot more common for them to have dysbiosis, which is basically an abnormal bacterial balance in their gut. So that's also an opportunity for us to, to really shift things in our gut and really upgrade uh, what's happening in our gut, which has a lot to do with our immune system as well. So that's important. Um, it helps with blood sugar regulation. Insulin growth factor one, something so important to manage uh, for any woman, anyone, male, female, everyone, um, a high level of insulin growth factor one um, is less than ideal when it comes to breast health. So fiber really helps put the brakes on that and can truly make a difference. Um, it also helps with weight loss. Um, it, it increases satiety. Um, there's some research looking at uh, excreting a certain amount of calories, but mainly really it's satiety and really helps with weight loss, which makes uh, a difference. And now we have a lot of research about how it supports our immune system. Really interesting research that's coming out. Um, and who would have thought that fiber has so much to do with uh, contributing to our immune system. So uh, that's, those are some pretty important reasons to focus just, uh, just on that. But one of the things I do wanna mention is that there's a certain amount when it comes to breast health that is ideal. So when you look at all these studies and there was one, uh, there was like a meta-analysis of about 
more than half a million studies that, uh, that looked at uh, women and their diets and fiber intake. And pretty much it's, it's what we're finding is that above 30, 35 grams really is the target that I'm recommending for breast health. And uh, so that's really your goal. Easier said than done though. And now we're not just looking at the total number. Now we're learning about the importance of diversification. You wanna get different kinds of fiber. You can't just focus on putting all your eggs in one basket. So that's very, very interesting. And also something that's interesting is that despite almost every American knowing that fiber is so important when it comes to our health, only 3% are getting their, meeting their fiber goal. 97% are getting way more protein than you would ever imagine, nor do they need, but only 3%. So think about that. You know fruits and veggies are good. You're eating a couple salads a day. You're not getting there. So it's really important to connect with your um, personal private dietitian and, and really think about this and map it out so that it's easy and you have that agenda on your day to day and consistency is one of the most important things, most important things. So, um, Rachel, can I jump in here with our first question? So you're speaking about the importance of fiber and breast health. Can you also, is, is it the same for ovarian cancer and other cancers as well? So we don't have as much, obviously breast cancer, we have a lot more research um, than say ovarian cancer, but yes, hormonal balance is important. Regulating your blood sugars is important when it comes to ovarian cancer as well. So I can't think of any reason why this wouldn't be a really good idea. And yes, there is research as well supporting regulating your blood sugars. Everything I just mentioned, absolutely. I'm mentioning, by the way, breast health because that's mainly what I've done the research on specifically for this particular talk. But I would say anybody with a history of ovarian cancer, any thriver, definitely, definitely should jump on board with all these recommendations. I really appreciate you mentioning that. Definitely. Lots, lots. Uh, lots to, to do with that. So I'll, I'll combine it. Uh, so diversific diversification is really something important. You want to get insoluble fibers. You want to get soluble fibers. And the interesting thing is that within the soluble fiber category, we have prebiotics. And I'm sure you've all started to hear about um, prebiotics, probiotics, but prebiotic fibers are really, really important as well. And um, that's something that you definitely want to start incorporating. And I'm going to be showing you how to incorporate prebiotics as well. Prebiotics, mainly when it comes to vegetables, we're looking at mushrooms that have prebiotics. They're also rich in beta glucans, which is really good for your immune system. Um, artichokes, jicama, uh, dandelion greens, really, really good for you, and uh, artichokes. So, those are some vegetables that would be key on, on that. And then uh, pre-ripe bananas are more, they have a lot more prebiotics than ripe yellow bananas. And uh, basil seeds that I'll be talking about today are very, very rich in pectin, which is a prebiotic. So there's, there are a lot of foods that are really rich in prebiotics, including oats as well. So we're, we're looking at food, we're looking at some of this, something that so, seems so basic to us, but it actually has so much value. So it, uh, it really gives a shout out to simplicity when it comes to uh, our diets as well. Um, so again, some of the fiber boosting, I just wanted to share some examples. You can, there are so many brands out there, so it's not specific to anything here, but uh, chia seeds, white or black, great fiber booster. Um, psyllium, both soluble and insoluble, uh, fiber prebiotics as well. Um, I'll be using this prebiotic fiber. Again, a lot of this is personal preference, so connect with your dietitian and, uh, you know, kind of trial and error and see what works for you. Flax seeds and basil seeds as well. So those are just some examples of 
fiber uh, boosters that you can incorporate into your diet straight out of your pantry. So, um, okay. So now I'm gonna start by uh, showing you the breakfast cookies. Um, so um, I'm gonna start off with two bananas. Again, remember if they're uh, a little green, it's a little better when it comes to prebiotics, but in this case, probably um, it will taste better if they're a little bit more ripe, which is perfectly fine. Bananas ripe are perfectly fine to eat. I've had patients tell me, oh, that has too much sugar. I don't eat bananas. Boy, the day that we pick on that, <laughs> we're doing really well. Um, okay, so I'm gonna put that in a bowl right here. You're gonna put it in a large bowl, two bananas that you've kind of cut up. And then uh, what you're gonna do is, I like to use a potato masher because I find it to be very quick and easy. So you're just gonna mash it here. I'm not gonna do a perfect job for the sake of time, but you're just gonna mash it. And then you're going to add two thirds of a cup of rolled sprouted oats right here. I hope you guys can see. Two tablespoons of chia seeds. And then I'm adding um, a blend, a morning blend called Cinepeel Spicer. This is one of my blends that I put together. It's Ceylon cinnamon, which helps, uh, it contributes to blood sugar regulation, important for breast health, um, also anti-inflammatory effects. It also has uh, orange peel in it, a little bit organic. I have to stress that spices must be organic. Um, and I'll go over that as well. Um, so orange peel has limelene and hesperidine, both have been shown to support breast health, very powerful. Um, and a little bit of ginger for reducing inflammation. So if you don't have this, I mean, the link will be provided to you. You can add these different spices and make your own blends. Um, so I'm adding a teaspoon, I like to keep it easy, a teaspoon of the Cinepeel Spicer, and then I'm adding avocado oil, a couple tablespoons. They'll keep everything moist, really, really good. And then I'm adding the prebiotic fiber right here. The one I chose to use is this one. And I love it because it also has um, apple peel in it, a little bit of more of the orange peel in it. Not that much, but enough to give it a, a good diverse source of uh, prebiotic fibers. So. I'm just putting it in there and then you're just going to mix everything together really, really quick. This is very, very quick. And then all you're going to do is take a parchment lined baking sheet. Uh, for the sake of this meeting, I didn't want to get my hands all gooey. Use clean hands, form four patties. So it's four patties that you're going to make pretty much equal size. And then I tell my patients, they can have two of these for breakfast. And the reason I'm doing that is not just to keep them full and satisfied, but also one of the goals that I have is for, uh, for you to get, for my patients to get 10 grams of fiber before noon. Because look, 30 to 35, if you start looking up numbers from vegetables and fruits and everything, it's exhausting. So if you get 10 out of the way in the morning, You've got a good step ahead on your day, and uh, that's great. You can also have one um, as a snack with um, a power beverage, which will be another, uh, another Zoom that I can do, but um, really great. I love how they smell, love how they taste. My family's pretty picky, and they will eat them, so um, they're good. They're good. And um, I also noticed some of my patients are on the Zoom. They're enjoying them. Uh, for anybody who doesn't like bananas, um, they've been subbing some apple. And so there are so many different variations of this, but keeping it quick, simple, and easy. And um, again, just to review, you've got 10 grams of fiber. They're whole, it's a whole food-based fiber. You've got oats, which has prebiotics, also has beta-glucan, which is good for the immune system. You've got the uh, prebiotic fiber that I added in there, another fiber boost, and um, you've got some power spicing in there, which we'll talk about as well. 
good fats and uh, the chia seeds are a fiber booster, incredible, and uh, gives you a good fiber punch. So again, quick, easy, and I hope um, I've inspired you to get 10 grams of fiber uh, tomorrow. Rachel, I'm gonna jump in um, and just say, we are gonna send out the recipe afterward uh, for all the things that Rachel are doing tonight, is doing tonight, so don't worry. Um, but Rachel, are you baking them? I'm so sorry, yes. We're going to put them in the oven at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. Good catch. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you're not eating them raw. You're going to form them. You're going to put them on the baking sheet, and then you're going to bake it in the oven for 30 minutes. Jenna, keep an eye on me. Uh, we've got very active participation. It's not me. <laughs> I'm just the messenger. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. I'm going to move on to the next uh, fiber booster that I love using. Um, and this one is basil seeds. Um, I can see a few of you guys. I know you guys are on mute, but raise your hand if you've tried basil seeds. Ooh, I get a lot of no's. I like teaching new things. This is awesome. Cool. Okay. So basil seeds, um, they look like chia seeds. I don't know how much you can see, but they're, they look exactly like chia seeds. They're a little bit smaller. And um, I can give you some comparisons. Um, basil seeds have seven grams of fiber per tablespoon. Chia seeds has five grams of fiber per tablespoon. Chia seeds have more omega-3s than basil seeds. So bottom line is we're not getting rid of chia seeds and switching over to basil. We're diversifying. We are changing up our fiber routine with different tools for our prevention and management. And um, so um, what I like about, I'm gonna show you the yogurt crunch, another little tip recipe that you guys will be getting. But here's something really cool. So um, this is the yogurt crunch that I'm making, by the way. So it's basically um, yogurt with uh, basil seeds with some berries. Okay. so. You don't have to do this, but I really, really like this for increased satiety. Um, when you put a little bit of water on the basil seeds, so you're basically gonna just do this, put a little, you can put two tablespoons of basil seeds in a little cup or a little bowl like this. And then literally after like a minute, you guys are gonna see, it's gonna swell like gel. Kind of like my patients describe it like a boba, but it doesn't taste as good as boba. Um, see, it's already hard. It's not even moving. So it's fully gelled. And then what I like to do is I take um, a plant-based yogurt, uh, cashew yogurt, almond yogurt, rich in probiotics, unsweetened. And then um, you want to fiber boost it. So you're going to add the two tablespoons of the basil seeds into the yogurt. And then you're just going to stir it up. And then, um, and that's it. You're just going to top it up with some fruit. Um, I am a firm believer in power spicing your foods to add an extra boost of antioxidants because it tastes good and it's giving you that added benefit. Um, so you can add some spices in there, Ceylon cinnamon, ginger, turmeric, cacao, uh, you know, uh, granulated organic orange peel. And, and that's it. It's that, it's that easy. Uh, I like to make them in advance so that I have them ready to go at all times. So that's the simple um, recommendation with this. And, um, and that is going to give you uh, at least 14, 50, about 16 grams of fiber. Different kinds. You've got some from the fruit and then you've got the uh, prebiotic fibers from the basil seeds and the probiotic uh, probiotics, which is not a fiber, from the yogurt. So that's another quick and easy way to use a fiber booster from your pantry. Rachel, here we got a question. We have some questions about basil seed because I think this is new to a lot of us. Oh, oh, one more thing. Sorry. It doesn't taste like basil. I okay, so the, what does it taste <laughs> like? What, is, what are we talking about here? <laughs> It doesn't taste like basil. It doesn't smell like basil. It doesn't taste like basil. I'll take the question now. <laughs> the question was, what does it taste like? Like, what, it, what are we expecting out of that? And then where do you get basil seeds? Because I don't think any of us 
see it on the shelf or maybe we don't know to look for it? Um, you can find them at online. Amazon has basil seeds, um, health food stores. So, but I, I get them online. I get them online. So um, yeah, so there, there you've got uh, basil seeds as another something new, again, rich in prebiotic fibers, which is really, really good for you. And we're not ditching uh, chia seeds. Very important, has uh, other benefits as well. So, um, okay, um, keeping with our schedule, I'm gonna bounce over to uh, power spicing. So, um, I don't know if any of you have had a chance to check out my latest book. Um, it's a best-selling book called Power Spicing. And um, what, what inspired me to write this book, um, there was an article uh, that came out, the, the American Institute for Cancer Research about um, the spices for cancer prevention. And I was just fascinated by it because I thought to myself in the world of supplements and getting bombarded with so many different things when it comes to cancer prevention, this is something everyone can do, everyone can afford. It's, it's something we all already have in our pantries. And I thought, this is great. It's so powerful and so impactful that um, I, I decided like, to, to look into it and to start researching different concepts with spices. Um, certain spices boost each other when it comes to the absorption of the active compounds. I thought that was great. I mean, who knew that, that um, you know, the omega-3s in fish actually um, enhance the absorption of curcumin, the active compound in turmeric, and uh, that cacao helped with the absorption of curcumin from turmeric, and that matcha had some syner synergy. And there's so much synergy going on that um, I started to put combinations together. And then I looked further into it and looked at the antioxidant value of spices compared to all these other foods, and they were just ranking super high. And so the pinch of prevention concept came about and it's, it's kind of cool. So um, there's been an explosion of research over the last five years when it comes to spices. I'm talking about 1900 studies on turmeric, 1400 studies on uh, garlic, 800 studies on clove, which by the way is super, super concentrated source. Probably it was ranked number one out of so many foods when it comes to uh, antioxidant value, 750 studies on cinnamon, amazing stuff, simple stuff. So I thought that was uh, great and um, um, five reasons to power spice your life, reducing inflammation, helping uh, fight cancer as well. Um, there's some research on its potential use for weight loss as well and uh, gut health, UCLA came out with this. It's just fascinating stuff for uh, gut health and you get to eat more whole foods, which I think is always uh, a bonus. So some do's and don'ts when it comes to spicing. Um, I would say the do's is to be consistent. I have my patients spicing morning, afternoon, and evening. So every occasion has an opportunity for spicing. Um, so things as simple as adding uh, turmeric and black pepper and adding cumin and paprika and all these different things, but it's not about making that occasional uh, Moroccan dish or that occasional dish. It's really an AM and a, and a daily routine, which is kind of just tasty, which is nice. Um, so consistency is key. Research shows that it's a cumulative effect. It's not one of those things that is going to have this short impact on your life. So um, that's, that's really important. Um, diversification, you want a diverse type of, you know, different types of spices as well. You definitely want to buy organic when it comes to spices. It's different from the produce that you're buying um, so that it's, it's um, sterilized with steam as opposed to being irradiated and fumigated. The World Health Organization had really uh, come out and said that a lot of these um, chemicals and the process that they're using in the conventional could be carcinogenic. So spend a couple more dollars and buy organic spices, uh, which you can find anywhere. Um, and so replace your spices also annually. 
even if the expiration, once you open it, replace it annually. And please don't buy them in bulk. Don't buy them out of the bins because they're not changing the stuff and rotating and saying, oh, you know, it's been a few months. Let's just empty the whole bin. No, they just keep filling the top a little bit, mixing it up. And I don't even want to tell you what's been found in those things. So don't buy them in bins. I know I've been to the Shook a million times. I love the smell. I'm obsessed with everything. But anyway, um, so um, yeah. And then make sure there's no added salt. You can add your own salt, no sugar. It's amazing how many organic spices out there just have all these additives and anti-caking agents and just simple. And you could just make your own blends. Um, so let's start adding uh, a pinch of prevention. Let's do a little demo. So um, what I have here is um, golden overnight oats. So what you're going to do, very, very simple. You take half a cup of sprouted organic oats and uh, half a cup of uh, plant-based milk. You mix it all together, put it in the fridge. You can add chia seeds if, if you want. But before you add the chia seeds, I just want to share with you the impact of spicing. So what I did with this one is just the oats and the milk alone have an antioxidant value of 136. So um, a lot of foods were given. There was a, a study that looked at 3,100 3, foods and uh, it, they did a, what they called a FRAP assay where they looked at the um, amount of antioxidants within those foods. So it's just a number. And so this together has 136. If you're adding some spices, I'm choosing uh, my golden breakfast blend here. Uh, which has uh, cacao, turmeric, um, and Ceylon cinnamon. If you're adding a teaspoon, you're going from 136 to 1292. That's a huge jump. That is a huge impact that spicing has when it comes to the value of your food on the antioxidant front. So. I thought that was pretty cool and I'm using the, the golden breakfast blend. Again, it's that combination. You can make your own um, by putting these together. And again, as I mentioned before, I thought it's really, really cool that cacao um, enhances the absorption of curcumin, which is the primary uh, component, active compound found in turmeric. And I don't know if you guys have heard, um, you can raise your hands. Um, that black pepper works in sync with turmeric. A lot of people, um, so great, so I'm gonna share. So um, adding a pinch of black pepper to turmeric enhances the absorption of curcumin, the, the active compound that is so good uh, when it comes to reducing inflammation, potential anti-cancer effects, and so much more by 2,000%. Just doing that, that's incredible. I don't have the, uh, the number and the percentage of how cacao enhances the absorption of curcumin from um, turmeric, but um, it does work in sync. So that's a really powerful couple. And um, anyways, I hope, I hope I've inspired you to add that and to incorporate uh, this. Okay, so um, another thing that, another recipe that you guys have is any of you guys tried a golden latte? Yes, I'm getting some yeses. Great, great. So golden lattes are really, really popular. Uh, I know we're not out in coffee shops right now, but basically they're um, usually made with some kind of milk with turmeric and ginger and all these healing herbs. And, um, but usually when you're ordering them at a coffee shop, it's got a ton of added sugar, which is something you definitely want to bypass. So um, here's something um, simple. Take a cup of plant-based milk and you can put it in a pot. I didn't want to do a whole thing here with everything going on, but you can also put it in a cup. Then I'm adding um, a teaspoon of the golden breakfast blend, which again is cacao, turmeric, and Ceylon cinnamon. Delicious, nothing overpowering. And uh, you can 
warm it up on the stove top and have it as a warm latte. Or what I like to do is I either put it in a jar with the plant-based milk. Um, you could do two cups, this is two cups. And I just shake it up. Or many times I'll put it in a little blender cup and blend it and then serve it over ice in the summer. Or you could just take it to go. So much cheaper than getting one of those lattes. You have no added sugars and so much value and power. And so the antioxidant value of, let's say, a cup of unsweetened soy milk is 123. And once you added the, uh, the three spices that I mentioned, you're going up to 1,224. And that's, that's pretty cool. That's very powerful. So um, I in, hope I've inspired you to try uh, this one. And Rachel, as you're um, shifting things, we got a question about cooking spices. So adding heat, does that change its benefits at all? Heat changes the benefit when, you know, when we're looking at vegetables, sometimes uh, cooking vegetables for a long time deteriorates the value. Um, cooking with spices, it's not a significant change at all. And to um, have spices kind of raw all the time, like if I took these chickpeas and spiced them up and just ate it, I wouldn't. So the added value is without question, and we tend to cook it, but there's no significant loss. Um, but again, you don't want to cook your food to death on so many different fronts. So um, yeah. And um, I think the last time I did a talk, there was a question also about um, fresh versus dry. I don't know if that interests anyone. Okay, so the, the dry spices actually have a lot more value than the fresh. Doesn't mean we're not adding the fresh, but um, that question comes up a lot. And I thought I would just spontaneously share that just in case it's, it's of any interest to anyone. Um, okay, so um, chickpeas. You're gonna go, you can have a cup of chickpeas, rich in fiber, by the way, um, and rich in protein, which is incredible. And um, so, if you're going to add, I'm adding, um, so the chickpeas have an antioxidant value of 112. And what I'm doing is adding half a teaspoon of a blend called Everything Savory. It has paprika, garlic, uh, black pepper, turmeric. And so um, it's absolutely delicious, actually inspired by a spice blend that was made for chicken and fish in the shook. So I just smelled it and I said, I have to make this. Um, and then I'm adding half a teaspoon of, of the Vegitude Power Blend, which has uh, garlic and onion, both incredible anti-cancer potential right there. Um, and also parsley, which um, has something called epigenin, uh, also shown to have potential very powerful anti-cancer benefits and turmeric and black pepper. So things are working in sync and it literally goes on everything and anything. And so right there, we went from 112 to 267. And so you're gonna add a little bit of oil to it, roast it in the oven. I usually like to do it at 350 for about 30 minutes or so. And uh, you get these spiced chickpeas that are absolutely delicious, super, super easy. Again, um, these are blends that are already put together, but you can pull out 10 spices and put this whole thing together as well and, uh, and you know, have this antioxidant boost um, with your foods. And you, you might want to add a little bit of sea salt, black pepper, some more, um, some more cayenne, but really, really uh, a simple way to add daily power um, is, is what I'm finding. There. Are you dried or canned chickpeas? Okay, so um, that's actually coming up in my next piece. But um, actually, since the table's clear, I'm, I'm going to stay with you on that one, actually. Perfect, perfect transition, Jenna. If only we had rehearsed it. <laughs> What's that? It's like we've rehearsed it. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let, while I'm doing this, actually, um, you asked about canned, right? So, yes, these, um, these are from a Tetra Pak or a BPA and BPS free can. So, let me explain. So, um, I'd say 99% of cans on the market have, and I'm sure you guys have heard, you know, oh, BPA free, right? So, it, they took out this potential carcinogen out of the lining. But these cans also have, that's bisphenol A. These cans also have bisphenol S, which is also a potential carcinogen, except this one brand, actually, we did some research connected. Uh, what we understand is that Eden brand, which is kosher OU, um, doesn't have BPA or BPS. They have some patent on, on these cans, and it doesn't have either one from what we understood from that. I generally like to recommend that my patients buy uh, Tetra Packs to be on the safe side. They look like those, um, you know, cartons of almond milk that we're used to seeing, a little smaller. Um, this is the 365 Whole Foods brand, and uh, this is the uh, Simply Balanced brand. And you can also find a lot of pouches these days. So a lot of companies are jumping on board with this, and uh, this is a great great way to go. Um, so yes, these chickpeas are, um, are from one of these type of containers, and that's my tip for that. Um, does that answer the question? Uh, while I'm setting up, feel free to, to let me know if that answers that question, or was there another part to that, Jenna? No, that was the question. And Rachel, can you just touch on how, what's the max number of antioxidants we're supposed to be reaching every day? Oh, if only I had that answer. <laughs> or is it just only has that answer? <laughs> no, there, there's no such thing. There's okay. absolutely no such thing. I can tell you this. Um, so a lot of patients will wonder about like taking uh, supplementation of heavy antioxidants during treatment. That's different. Food is fine. You want to have the antioxidants from your food, and as long as you're sticking to foods fresh herbs, spices, it's great. We don't have a number of the target number of antioxidants to prevent disease or to prevent recurrence or management of disease. We don't have that. But what we do have, what we do have, and I do want to stress this, is that we have thousands of studies, thousands about the impact that food has on our health and the negative effects of foods that that, are, that have a negative effect. We have so much research that I can tell you that there is nothing to lose and only a lot to gain. And I promise this is a really good idea to pursue. To, this is really a proactive way to uh, manage your health. And again, it's a cumulative effect and it, it, it definitely systemically makes a difference. And think about what I said in the beginning. In the beginning, I talked about fiber and what I knew a few years ago and what I know today. It's completely changed. I would say during COVID, I probably spent 100 hours at least modifying my uh, talk that I give, the section on fiber and, and creating graphics and really getting in there as far as the diversification of fiber, how fiber impacts our immune system, how when we eat fibers, it activates, you know, in our gut, it activates um, phytoestrogens to protect us on the cellular level. I mean, this is incredible stuff, but the key is to really understand that there's a target number that's ideal and to confirm that you are reaching that number and diversifying. So, for fiber, that's as much as we know. For antioxidant, I mean, that's a whole world, world, world. Um, but um, look, the studies from um, on cancer, on uh, sorry, spices, and the reports from the American Institute for Cancer Research, and everything that we're seeing out there. If you start searching credible, evidence-based studies, it's it's incredible. I mean, it's incredible, and it's something that 
anybody can, uh, you know, we can, we can help ourselves and we can be proactive and it feels so good. I mean, that's my passion project with patients is really seeing that impact. But um, I do want to stress that it takes, it's not one of those things where you go to a dietitian for one or two meetings. It's a process. So give yourself that time. And that's really what I work on one-on-one -on -one or um, during the masterclass. I have a 90-day masterclass that teaches all this stuff. It's less personal, but again, there's a reason why we give that window of time. Okay, so um, now I'm going to shift gears. Thank you for your patience. Uh, it's it's a big it's a big uh, table here with all kinds of stuff. So I'll uh, I'm shifting gears and talking about plant based proteins, specifically the ones that I consider fast food and the ones that come out of your pantry, which is kind of kind of cool. But I really like to keep things um, as simple and quick as possible. I don't give any of my patients long recipes because they're not going to repeat and that defeats the purpose because consistency is essential. So plant-based proteins um, and, and one of the most common questions that I get from my patients is, Rachel, should I, should I be vegan? Should I, how do I manage proteins? What should I do? And so um, I have to say that, you know, I help people no matter where they're at with that and transition. So I'm not, it's not all or none or black and white, um, but I do have to say that uh, research does tell us that plant-based proteins are the absolute top tier when it comes to breast health and, uh, and also ovarian health, any, any kind of cancer. So um, that, that's important. And um, it's rich in saponins, cancer-fighting chemicals, uh, fiber, which we just learned about. I can go on and on about benefits, yet uh, when it comes to animal-based proteins, I probably won't have much to say. So um, there's uh, a study that, um, that looked at 90, it had 91,000 women in the study, and um, it found that plant, a plant-based diet was associated with a 15% risk reduction of breast cancer. That's just one. And then there was a recent study that just came out, actually. I just, they don't, the study isn't even published yet. It was uh, shared at a, at a meeting. And um, it's in the Journal of Clinical Oncology that had more than 100,000 women. And it showed that a high protein intake from plant sources versus animal sources was associated with a much lower risk of getting breast cancer and that same exact study also showed that women with breast cancer, already diagnosed, um, when they ate a higher plant protein diet, they lowered their risk of death after the diagnosis. Very interesting. So it has an impact on survivorship as well. And I think that's important to note and, um, and to incorporate as much as you can more plant-based proteins not just because it helps you reach that fiber goal. So I'm gonna share a few uh, fast foods. I call these my fast food plant-based proteins. So, um, okay, uh, watermelon seeds. I love recommending these, especially for patients during chemo because they're very easy to digest. A little bit goes a long way. Here, I'll show you. Like this is a third of a cup. It's so small, look, it fits in the palm of my, palm of my hand. Um, has nearly 13 and a half grams of protein. Again, very easy to digest. They're not in the shell. They're already shelled, okay? Um, so that's something easy to grab. Um, how else do my patients use this? So I have a lot of patients who are on the road a lot. They're traveling, not right now, but they're, they're traveling. And, um, you know, they tell me, hey, Rachel, you know, I can fetch a salad almost anywhere. But if I'm trying to eat more plant-based, they don't always have, at Italian restaurants, they don't want to have, always have lentils or garbanzo beans, or they vision them as like croutons. They're not really the main event. People don't get that uh, it's replacing 
like a cup of garbanzo beans is actually replacing your chicken breast or your fish. So um, this is something that's easy to take and don't laugh, but you can literally take it in your purse. So just, you're always ready. You can keep it in your car. Um, what else can you keep in your purse? This, this is kind of fun. Um, this is a pouch, ready to eat organic mixture of beans. Um, a lot of this is coming out and um, I don't see an OU on this one, but uh, you know, a lot of companies are coming out with this. So I'm sure we can find uh, different kinds, but again, put in your purse. Um, you can get sprouted pumpkin seeds. Also keep that in your purse. Organic soybeans, roasted dry soybeans, crunchy. Again, you could take a third of a cup with you. Tablespoons, 10 grams of uh, protein. And um, there are some dry roasted um, garbanzo beans. They're crunchy. And again, just put it in a little jar and keep it on you. So this way you're prepared, you're not stressed out. Again, many times I can find a salad anywhere. I can find a veggie soup, but adding these uh, plant-based proteins is fun. And I don't know how many of you have tried uh, fava beans, but um, they're delicious. These are dried, crunchy fava beans. Um, and you can take that too. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up. Um, Next, fast food from your pantry, sprouted lentils and mung beans, both incredible. Now, let me tell you about sprouted. This is, uh, this is uh, one example, and you're gonna be hearing a lot about sprouted uh, lentils and sprouted beans. So I'm gonna talk about the benefits. So one of the benefits is that um, sprouting the beans allows your body to absorb more of the nutrients. So enhanced nutrient absorption, incredible, right? And another thing is that um, there's less of those side effects that come along sometimes as you're building a tolerance to beans and you definitely will build a tolerance. It's just a matter of how long and everyone varies, but it's very easy to digest. I know patients who are undergoing chemo, um, it's a great transition, um, again, easy to digest. And why did it make it into my pantry fast food category? You might wonder, because it actually only takes five minutes to cook. So think about it. Most food that's been processed for quicker cooking has less to offer on the nutritional front, right? Not here. This offers you more, yet it's fast food and it's super, super quick. So. You would just basically, for example, you could take two cups of uh, dried sprouted lentils, cover it about two inches with either water or broth. I usually add any mixture of power spicing in there and then uh, simmer it for about five minutes, turn it off, let it sit for a few minutes and you're done. Fast food. You know, it's great also when the entire family isn't necessarily eating exactly what you're eating. So sometimes, you're scrambling. And these are great quick solutions for that. Um, protein pasta. How many of you have tried these chickpea pastas, lentil pastas, uh, edamame organic pastas? Yeah, I see a lot of hands there. So chickpea pasta is also great. The whole family can enjoy it. Boil a pot of water and you've got high protein. And then um, this was kind of fun. I found this organic edamame pasta. There's plain, and then this one actually has spirulina in it, which is high in iron, which is kind of cool. So I'm definitely going to be trying this. I just uh, got this, and this also has an OU on it. Um, I think I've seen this in the kosher markets, actually. And uh, one more thing that's kind of fun, protein. This is more like a boost. I wouldn't call this like a replacement for chicken or anything, but nutritional yeast is something great to add to your pasta. Um, a tablespoon has three grams of protein and uh, it has that cheesy flavor and there's so many things that you can do with it actually. So, um, but that's, um, those are some of the fast food uh, proteins that come from your pantry. So um, I hope you're not feeling too overwhelmed, but I hope you got a lot of tips and I want to open it up for questions. 
Thank you so much, Rachel. This was really uh, inspiring. And I, I definitely know that everybody will take at least 20 things away that they'll be implementing over the next uh, week. So thank you. Um, so we have a lot of different questions. So I'm just going to go. Um, can you talk a little bit about salt and what kind of salt we should be using in our food? Sea salt, iodized, Himalayan. I like Himalayan or a little bit of sea salt. Again, you're keeping salt really, really, really low in your diet. You don't want to, you want to control it by adding your own. Um, but those are the two that I favor and recommend. And also one thing that I started recommending um, just a little bit more last week, actually, is um, miso paste. And it has some saltiness, but it's also rich in probiotics. So it's really adding that value to your food and has that saltiness. So I recommend adding that um, in place of salt. So not every dish will take to it, but yeah, it's something that I would add um, uh, into stir fries or uh, into a little bit into your soup. Try it a little bit, it's, it's good. We got a few questions about estrogen. You spoke at the beginning about um, fiber and its role um, with estrogen. So I'm gonna just address a few of them. Women who are in pre or post menopause with too low of estrogen, how does that affect your fiber intake or does it matter? So no, you still wanna reach for that target amount of fiber because it helps keep your body balanced on multiple different fronts. So you've got blood sugar regulation and you've got your immunity as well. So I wouldn't touch that fiber target at all, at all. Even for people who are taking estrogen inhibitors? Uh-huh, no, still, I would definitely keep that at that same level. Uh -huh. And of course, the soy question. Um, can you just provide us some insight on soy and estrogen? Okay, so we used to think all the research prior to 2009 um, we used to think like, limit your soy intake. Um, and we thought that uh, soy wasn't a good idea, especially if you're taking tamoxifen or any of the medications that um, it, was, uh, it wasn't something you, that you're adding more estrogen into your body. And if it's a plant-based estrogen, that can't be good for you. All the research post 2009 has uh, contradicted that. So it's a long, answer, but in a nutshell, basically the plant phytoestrogens of plant chemicals actually are blocking this on the cell. There's alpha and beta receptors. And these plant estrogens are coming in contact and they're actually blocking the alpha receptor, which is what causes the damage and cell proliferation. So it's a really good guy. You want to have a lot of that present so that the estrogen that comes and the hormones that come from animal-based proteins, for example. If you're gonna compare that to uh, a plant estrogen that comes from soy or from uh, strawberries or from lentils and sesame seeds, there's so many foods that have plant estrogens in them, just like soy. There's no comparison. There is absolutely no comparison. One is actually, um, gonna, gonna be an estrogen blocker and contribute to the prevention of recurrence. And one is actually potentially gonna be harmful. So you really want to uh, think about that, but it really is um, um, going and going more to, it's hard to explain like this, but there's an alpha and a beta receptor and it's an estrogen blocker. So it's a really good guy, it shuts the door. So um, it's, it's, but I do want to stress that you want to get organic, definitely want to get organic um, and whole food based. So the dried um, soybeans that I showed you, organic tofu, tempeh, which has um, good probiotic benefits as well. Um, also the miso paste. So be selective, whole food based is really important. Don't go for the processed soy stuff with um, a lot of foods have, soy powders in them. Don't go for things that have been extracted and man manipulated. A lot of the protein powders are like that. No. We got a few questions about whether these 
um, snacks were low calorie. Sure. Um, and you haven't touched on calorie count as part of this. So if you could kind of combine your answers. Um, sure. What would you like to know about? So um, I, I don't have calorie, people. And should we be worried about calorie count in general as we're talking about all this? Okay. We can't escape the fact that the numbers stack up. It's not very trendy to look at numbers and calculate anymore because um, there's that feeling of you're compromising value. But I could tell you as a dietitian, if I'm putting somebody on a weight management plan, you better believe that I'm thinking on the back end about these expenditures for sure. Then I'm also taking into account the fiber, which aids with weight loss as well. So when it comes to snacks, I would advise to pay attention to caloric values. Why? Not because I want you to sit there with a calculator because you might undermine the quality because it's getting you used to um, the portion. And the portion control is something that I don't think we'll ever escape it as much as we want to. I think it's important. I think people deserve to know that. So, I mean, calories and all this would be a big question, but if you're asking if I utilize all this in an aggressive uh, weight management and cancer management uh, regimen, yes, absolutely. But I owe it to my patients to tell them how much to be putting in there to accomplish both. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a huge, you know, probably spend an hour talking about the caloric values. But for example, when I'm figuring out this, for example, for breakfast, you better believe I'm thinking about weight management and the fiber element as well. So yes, definitely. Um, we, we got a question about if there's any concern with any of the spices interfering with medications. Is that ever an issue with your patients? Anything to be concerned about? I mean, that's a very individualized, but no, there's been a question sometimes about tamoxifen and turmeric, but we have not found any research um, on that. Okay. Um, a few more no, questions. There might be some drug that maybe uh, prohibits you from using cayenne or maybe using something else, but uh, generally speaking, uh, there aren't that many uh, drug spice interactions. And I will say, you know, if you have any concerns, anyone who's participating, you definitely want to speak with your healthcare professional as well. Definitely. Um, so Rachel, can you talk about where a lot of us are using frozen food right now? Any difference between frozen vegetables versus fresh? Yes. So um, a lot of people wonder if frozen fruits and vegetables are um, as good as fresh. And they're surprised to learn that they're actually better when they're frozen. Um, but of course we want to eat fresh vegetables, so why? So what happens is when you, when they pick organic produce like berries or um, veggies, they pick them at their peak and then they freeze them immediately. So when they freeze it, they're locking in the nutrients. Whereas when it's well-traveled on its way to Gelson's or Whole Foods or wherever it's going, it loses its uh, value as, you know, as time goes by. So um, frozen is definitely great and um, has a lot of nutrients. So um, definitely diversify and have fresh frozen. And then farmer's markets, um, you're definitely gonna get a better, better value there. And which of the foods do you talk about tonight are energy boosters for us? Oh, well, so the fact that just so happens that pretty much everything that I've spoken about is so rich in fiber, it's gonna give you lasting energy. I can, I can actually speak to that, let's say, you know, it's right in front of me, so I'm gonna keep pointing at this, but what would make these cookies energy cookies, for example? So what's happening here is that you've got um, the fiber, you've got essential fatty acids, you've got the avocado oil, and then you have fat from the chia seeds, right? And so the fiber, the fat, um, there's protein in here as well, coming from all these ingredients. That synergy gives you sustainable energy. This, you know, the lentils are gonna give you, contribute to an energy balance as well because again, you've got protein and fiber, and then when you're building a meal, you're also adding a healthy fat at a certain amount. Of course, 
Again, you want to think about portion control. That synergy gives you that energy balance. And then with your snacks, I always um, teach my patients that um, snacks also, you want to look for that balance. If you want to eat baruca nuts or almonds or any of these, uh, you know, um, soybeans or, or whatnot, and, um, or you want to eat an apple, it's good to do pairings together so that you have that synergistic effect, which creates long lasting energy. And I know it's getting late, so I'm going to ask you two more questions. We got a few questions about dairy. Um, you, you mentioned using plant-based milk tonight. So what's your recommendation about dairy in general? Okay, so I'm not a huge fan of using dairy um, because I'm trying to also reduce the animal-based uh, hormones. So for hormonal balance and to, um, you know, not have uh, excess hormone intake. So um, a lot of people ask me this question also, well, I buy hormone-free milk, right? Because it says hormone-free on the, on, the, on the carton. There's no such thing. So it just means that they didn't uh, give, you know, it's, it's organic. They didn't uh, add, give them um, hormones, but you know, any, any being has hormones naturally, right? So, um, you know, to, so that's where I'm actually uh, bouncing off the recommendation for dairy and keeping that preventative element in place. And the beautiful thing is that there's so many clean alternatives these days. There are so many almond milks and cashew milks that don't have uh, pro-inflammatory oils. I give all my patients specific shopping guides as to um, what to buy, why they're buying it. So if you're buying a plant-based milk, look for ones that don't contain carrageenan, pro-inflammatory oils such as this and that, and all these clean ingredients that it's actually easy these days. And um, um, with yogurts, again, it's a matter of taste. So I probably sampled like 10 different kinds and then I found mine. Everybody finds their corner. But um, yeah, so that's that's, uh, that's something that I usually try to wean my patients um, off of as well. And so some people have side effects to dairy too. Um, uh, we've also had a few questions about locating and tracking down some of these products that you're recommending. You've recommended so many. Are there some good online sellers where we can get things like watermelon seeds, things that are really are much harder to find? Um, um, I, I actually tell people Nothing's too hard to find these days because it's all a click away. There's Amazon, Thrive Market, uh, Air One, everyone's delivering. So um, health food stores in general in your local area, but online, um, it's easy. Amazon pretty much has everything I'm talking about tonight. Amazing. Except things that are specific to a store. So for example, 365 is Whole Foods. So, but, and then the, the spices are all on my website as well. Um, they're all OU and kosher. Amazon, I think, has been selling out, um, but I think we have uh, on our website. So if anyone's interested in getting those, it's also click away. I think we have the links provided for you guys, um, you know, or look for spice combinations that have synergy, no salt added, no, no sugar added. So um, it, it doesn't have to be from Bella Nutrition. It could be from anywhere, but you really are looking for that uh, those, those combinations um, and the flavor that you may or may not like. Uh, you may not like mine, but you know, there are plenty out there. Great. Thank you so much. Um, everyone's muted, but we're all giving you a round of applause for this amazing and If anybody wants to join uh, the 90-day uh, masterclass for weight loss and breast health, the next one starts August Third, I think we um, we still have a few slots. So, um, but that's really something where we um, really give this great value for um, a hand-holding experience for uh, specifically for for that. Thank you. And I know we got more. Questions. It's a nutrition boot camp, basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we got a few more questions that came in, so we'll try and follow up with you after to answer them. Um, we'll be sending out all the recipes, information about next week's Sephora webinar, and everyone will get this recording who's registered. So, and it's permanently on Sharshara's website. Um, so you can all go back and watch this again anytime. I know I will. Um, Rachel, um, 
Thank you, our Sharshare at La Brea committee. Thank you so much, Natalie. Thank you for sharing your story. Um, and we look forward to seeing all of you soon.